What makes a great logo design? What makes for solid branding? These are questions we will answer throughout the section as we look at solid examples of each. Logo design is the mainstay of graphic design. As a graphic designer for over 14 years, I've designed logos for a wide variety of clients, for both profit and nonprofit clients. I've come to learn all the projects a designer is tasked with. The logo design project is the heart of it all. But why? Look at any poster, Facebook page, website. What do you see? You see the company's logo and brand mark, a group of text, symbols, colors, and words that try to describe the very essence of a company, and designing one is no easy task. The way a logo looks and feels is not random, but based on several different factors. The look and feel of a logo must match the company's mission statement, beliefs, target audience, and style. Take for instance Under Armour. The entire brand is focused around the Under Armour logo. The logo is not just a marketing tool or a design asset, but it makes up the basis for their entire clothing line, shoes, backpacks, and more. And just like Nike, Under Armour makes a whole lot of money from their logo design and branding. They spend a pretty penny too, hiring branding agencies to craft it into the multi-million dollar logo it is today. Logo design is not just for large corporations. Solid logo design principles can be applied very easily to much smaller companies without the million dollar price tag. And this is where you come in. And knowing these solid design characteristics can help you identify great logo design and help you create one yourself. Strong logo designs have the following characteristics. They have balance between symbols, type, and elements. Not all logos need type, and not all logos need symbols. Some are just typographic elements, such as a simple name, written out in a typeface that matches their style. Some logos are made with unique custom typefaces, designed solely for, you, for the use of that particular brand. They are recognizable using only part of the logo design. Louis Vuitton is a great example of this. Without seeing the full logo or even the name, you know right away that this is a Louis Vuitton purse. Having this type of brand recognition makes marketing that product or service so much easier. They do not need to depend on color to be effective. Color is critical in logo design, but a strong logo example does not need to depend on color. Coach is a great example. The logo can exist in many other environments without using any particular color. This makes the logo more versatile and adaptable to all environments. Many times as a designer, I've had to work with a logo using only one ink color or a black and white publication. Sometimes logos that are, in, that are totally color dependent make this job harder for me to do. They work well in a wide variety of applications. Logos need to be flexible and dynamic. Can the logo adapt to a small 48 by 48 pixel square and still be recognizable? Can it be in just one ink color and still have all of its main characteristics? A logo needs to be able to be seen from a distance and still be readable and recognizable. Having a logo that can adapt to all situations is vital when it comes to creating a logo mark worthy of a long lasting brand. They can stand the test of time. Logo redesigns can be expensive, not because you have to pay the designer to redo one, but the cost of reordering letterheads, business cards, packaging, and products with the new logo, it really adds up. Uber recently did a rebrand back in 2014. In 2018, they decided to refresh the brand once more with a new logo and branding. They now have to switch all of their print and their digital assets to the new branding and logo mark, a very expensive endeavor. Does it mean that the first Uber rebrand did not look great? Not really. It just means that Uber has evolved as a company. The logo and branding assets did not move along with it. Thus, the rebrand was necessary to keep up with its ever-changing vision. How do you as a designer create a logo that stands the test of time? simply by getting input from the leadership of the company, whether that's from the owner for a smaller company or the marketing manager for a larger corporation. Knowing where they are trying to end up as a company can help you develop a logo that can be flexible and adapt to their future needs. They avoid popular trends. I cannot stress this enough. Avoiding trendy themes in your logo can help it stand the test of time. Remember Web 2.0? Well, 
Most of us try to forget it, but it was popular when I was first starting out, circa 2004 to 2007. A web 2.0 had glossy buttons, made popular by the latest OSX GUI upgrade on Macs. Everyone needed a logo with a gradient, a highlighted glossy portion, and a simplistic icon. You do not see this trend anymore, and if you do, it looks dated, tired, and just plain ugly. Any logo that was designed in the style had to quickly be rebranded as soon as something called flat design came into style circa 2008, which is a style that simplifies a design. No gradients, flat and simple shadows, and no gloss or details. Basically the opposite of the trend before it. Ask yourself if this logo will still be on point two, five, ten years from now. If the question is maybe or depends, then going for a more classic look may be a better bet. Simple, clean, and understated. You see a lot of logos now that use gold, hand-drawn lettering, and lots of watercolor. Super cool and trendy now, but five years from now, probably not. Fight the urge to be trendy, but be classy instead. They use negative space to their advantage. Not a requirement for a great logo, but a wonderful design theme I see in strong logo designs. They are liked by the company's target demographic. When I think about this one, I think about Gap, a clothing store brand. They did a rebrand in 2010, making its logo more modern, using a sans serif instead of its classic serif typeface chosen for decades prior. There was such a backlash and hate for the new logo, they were forced to switch back to its original logo, and it was a very costly mistake. They underestimated how their target audience would react to their beloved brand changing in typeface and in style. Make sure your logo design will resonate with your company's target audience. Knowing your target audience is half the battle. Who are most of your customers? If you don't have any customers yet, who do you wish to sell to? Never fear social media at getting opinions about a logo design. It's better to get negative feedback earlier in the process so you can adapt and make changes before a final launch, before the logo has already been applied to hundreds of items and products. People can read the logo. Seems like a no-brainer characteristic to have, duh. Everyone knows you should have a logo that's readable, but here lies the problem. You may have spent so much time with the design, you may not have a fresh pair of eyes to see any of those issues. Make sure others can read it too. I see this problem a lot with script fonts and logos. Sometimes certain script characters do not flow well together, and it can make a logo very hard on the eyes to read, which leads us into the last characteristic in a great solid logo design. They are as unique as the company. Logos should be one of a kind. This is another reason why staying away from trendy design themes is important. You do not want to look like everybody else. The logo you are designing is like a snowflake. I see way too many logo redesigns look the same way, and I shake my head in disappointment when I see another rebrand that looks the same. These are just a few characteristics of strong logo designs I've noticed throughout the years of studying rebrands and logo designs. If you strive for just a few of these characteristics, you'll be well on your way for a logo that will work well for you or your client.